What is Lent? Uh, it's where you're supposed to fast or give something up. When you're supposed to stop doing something till Easter, right? And you can start doing it again. It's a period of time where uh, you give up something that you don't really want to give up. So you have to sacrifice something that you like or love the most. When you do a month of sacrificing um, a certain thing that you really enjoy. Like when you give up something for a certain amount of time. But you can't eat meat every Friday, I believe. You have to like eat fish and stuff like that. Lent is when you give up something because Jesus walked in the desert for 40 days and 40 nights. When you fast in the Christian religion or the Catholic religion and like you give up something for Lent. It's 40 days, right? It's uh, the time before in, for Catholics in preparation for the resurrection of Jesus. Lent is a time for Christians to prepare for the coming of Christ and the resurrection of Him. There is a routine when it comes to Lent. You know it. There seems to be a common approach similar to that of a New Year's resolution, simply with religious motivation. It's, it's like a Catholic New Year's. <laughs> <laughs> Usually it's a time to give something up. People commonly ask, what are you giving up for Lent? Usually on Ash Wednesday morning, we decide what we're going to give up. That is not necessarily a lot of thought that goes into that. Often people give up the same things year after year, like soda, fast food, chocolate, or even Facebook. But there is a deeper meaning to the 40 days of Lent. It's an opportunity to grow even closer to God and make positive changes in our life that can last beyond the 40 days. Lent. Change your life in 40 days. That's what we'll be talking about today. Hi, everyone. I'm Elias. And I'm Kristen. And this, and this is, is Real Faith, Faith TV. TV. Most of the teens on the street saw Lent as a time to just simply give up something. We'll talk with them a little later in the show, as well as meet our studio guests. But first, let's meet our spotlight guest, Megan, where she'll talk to us about why Lent is so important to her. Let's hear her now. Lent is a season of prayer and reflection before Easter. It lasts for 40 days. It's a time of, like I said, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. It's a time when each one of us draws closer to the Lord individually and then also as part of the larger church community. I was definitely raised with the sense that Lent is a very important time, that there is a deeper meaning to the season. Even just when I was younger, my parents emphasized doing something in addition to just maybe giving something up. So whether that was, okay, you're going to help clean this room every day or you're going to like take care of your brother also going to church Holy Thursday Good Friday and now in more recent years I've taken on doing my own daily devotionals and scripture readings during Lent and going to morning prayer when we think about it the little sacrifices that we make during Lent. It'd be just giving up meat or other other foods. What, whatever we do, really just so incredibly small compared to the sacrifice that Christ made for us on the cross. You know, it's so true because, you know, like we said earlier, everybody kind of forgets the reason of the season. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's really nice to just know that, you know, now that, especially since we're coming up to Easter, yeah. just why Lent was even put in the church year to begin with. It's to prepare. Mm -hmm. It's not just to make a sacrifice. Yeah. Well, let's see what our studio guests have to say on this topic. Okay. They are Dan, Joelle, Jackie, Mary, Vince, Phil, and Catherine. So what is Lent and how is it important? Well, Lent is a time for us to look into ourselves and to reflect about our relationship with God. I think it's a time for us to sacrifice, like how God sacrificed, so maybe something like that. Yeah, I really do think it's a time of prayer and reflection to think about like, you guys said at the beginning of the show, it's like the Catholic New Year. And for New Year's, you make a New Year's resolution and you say, this is what I'm going to do and this is how I'm going to do better. Yeah, it's definitely a time of meditation, of growth. You want to see how you've grown closer to God, how you've grown in relationship to other people, you know. And maybe if you're rougher with, in some relationships with people, take some time during Lent to grow closer to them rather than pull, go apart from them. Lent for me is a time of introspection and reflection on not only yourself, how you've grown closer with, to God, 
but I know I reflect on how I've become with my family and the relationships I share with the, those I love. I think, as Megan said, it's not always a time of sacrifice, but also for doing things, like maybe spending some more time with God. And at some point, we just have to ask the question, have you done anything for Lent? Have you done anything for Lent? You know, it's funny you bring that up, Elias, because that's what we happen to ask the teens on the street. Well, let's check it out. Do you have anything or have you done anything for Lent? Not recently. As, actually, as a child, I used to give stuff up. One of my favorite things is chocolate, and I gave up chocolate. I drink a lot of soda and stuff, and it's not really good for me, so during Lent, I try not, not to drink soda. I put, a, put aside carbonated stuff. I got in the habit of putting it aside, and I really haven't been a big soda drinker since then. I tried a couple of times, like I gave up food or whatever, gave up like TV. Didn't really work out that well. My parents do, but not me. They give up sweets and certain kinds of meat. I know my family did, I didn't. They gave up like meat and stuff like they can only eat like certain stuff on Friday. Every year I do something for Lent. I've tried, but I haven't really been successful. Have any of these experiences had a positive or even long lasting impact on your life? Yeah, now I basically don't eat chocolate at all. I don't drink sodas anymore, and it does kind of give a person a sense of uh, sacrifice. Some of my Lent experiences, like not drinking soda, not a lot of cavities ever since then. I stopped cursing one time, and so that like slowed my cursing down a lot. What I usually give up is TV, and after that I don't watch TV any, anywhere nearly as much as I used to. I know for my sister it did. She was like really big on the candy and stuff, and like she kept getting kind of cavities. I guess that's an impact on her life because she doesn't even eat all that stuff anymore. My teacher this past year, she tried to get us to pray more and during Lent and had a profound experience. I had this uh, CCD teacher, you know, like religious education, who'd be like, don't give up anything up for Lent, but uh, you, should, you should just be nicer to everyone. I think that that had an impact because it's like, uh, you know, you're showing that you care rather than like, you know, giving up candy or something like that. All right, don't laugh. But the funniest thing I've ever given up for Lent, and the most difficult thing, mind you, has been popcorn. Every time I wanted to eat popcorn but I didn't, it kind of reminded me of why I gave it up in the first place, which was preparing for the resurrection of Christ. I mean, how about you guys? Have you given up something for Lent or done something in the spirit of the season? Well, actually, this past year, I gave up Facebook for Lent. Because, <laughs> like, I knew I was spending too much time on it. I mean, like, it's really easy to just, like, sit there and, like, on Facebook for hours. When Lent was over, like lately I've just been spending maybe 10 minutes a day on it and like I realized I don't really need it and it's not that important. A few years ago I gave up coffee and you were the one who convinced me to do it and it, it was tough. It was harder because each day someone was like, you want a cup of coffee? Do you want a cup of coffee? And I was like, no, I got to do this. I got to do this. And it was more like pride, like my pride was keeping me going. But by the end of it, I was like, I was at peace, but I was like, I'm really happy I did that because like, I was strong. And well, I know at my school in celebration of the season, we do a Passion or reenactment of the Stations to the Cross, which is just a basic reenactment of Jesus' journey to Calvary for his death, his crucifixion, and the resurrection as well. And I know at the end, all the female teachers were crying because it was a very dark, very somber moment. And it brought us together. My school did a similar thing like that. Um, every year, the eighth grade class does um, the Stations of the Cross. And not only do they do the stations, but in the middle of the stations, there's someone stationed in the um, audience. And they stand up and talk as if they're a teen in today's world. And they say, like, you know, my friend is getting made fun of on the playground or something. How can this relate to my life? And at the end, it made you realize how God's life and how Jesus' death plays a part in our life and at the end we were all crying because we all, we all started out in black and then at the end we all take off our black t-shirts and we have white t-shirts underneath to show the resurrection of Jesus and it was just a really moving moment and it really made me realize the real meaning of Lent. I've given up a lot of things for Lent like over the years and I, I find that like once I, I'm done giving it up I really don't really uh, eat or do that thing anymore like this year I gave up french fries and since then I really haven't eaten that many french fries so like it kind of helps you to like get rid of that bad vice. I give up procrastination for Lent because I am one of the people who sees homework, oh, I'll do it the period before it's due. So I said to myself, it'd be best using my senior year, using that time in Lent to take a habit that I know was going to probably hinder me later on in life and try my best to, you know, get rid of it. And it worked. Because now that I think about it, I'm really glad that I did it because it didn't necessarily bring me closer to God, but it's given me more time to be able to think clearly, and that is something I can use to become closer to God. Lent should be more than just a time to give something up. 
So many people seem to want to use Len as a chance to get in shape or lose weight. Maybe we give up sweets or our favorite food. Or decide to exercise every day or pray for five minutes in the morning. In many cases, it could seem like we're more concerned about a personal goal rather than a spiritual experience. Let's go back to our spotlight guest, Megan, where she talks about some of the inspiring things she does in her parish for Lent. And how her role as an advisor to her high school students enables her to teach others about their faith. Every year during Lent, the youth group at my home parish puts on a presentation of the seven last words of Christ. It's just a beautiful presentation. It begins with seven speakers processing in with seven lit candles and throughout the night they each give a reflection on the seven last phrases that Jesus said on the cross. And I was a part of this my sophomore, junior, and senior years of high school. It was just an incredible experience. I played violin all three years for the presentation and then my senior year I also narrated it. I think through telling others about the story of Christ's passion and telling others about what Lent is all about has helped me to appreciate it more. I taught religious education classes at my home parish and now at college I'm a leader for a Catholic girls club for 8 to 13 year old girls. It's cute and funny how so many times they'll often start off saying I'm going to give up homework for Lent, or I'm going to give up vegetables for Lent. And it's a really great opportunity then to tell them about sacrifice and to talk to them about the true meaning of what giving something up is. And it's been great to see how in some of them it clicks and all of a sudden they'll be wait, no, 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 I'm going to give up the time that I spend playing video games and I'm going to help out with my brother or sister. I'm going to get out the Bible that I got from communion last year and start reading some of the stories. And it's so encouraging. I think it's really important, like she said, when you, know, you find on your own and something clicks and then you, know, you really understand the meaning of Lent. Next, we asked the teens on the street why they think Lent lasts 40 days and what advice they can give others on the positive impact Lent can have on their lives. Lent lasts 40 days so it can like maybe test you on how long you can last without something. Just to see how long you can give up something. If you break a habit for a week, it's really not gonna do anything. It's a good solid round number, I'd say. The number 40 is very, very symbolic in the Bible. 40 is a pretty significant number in scripture. Jesus fasted 40 days. And Jesus, in the desert. How long Jesus walked through the desert, I guess. He like walked through the desert for 40 days. Jesus stayed in the desert for 40 days and 40 nights while he was battling with uh, Satan. What advice do you have for others about the practice of Lent and how can it help us to make a positive change in our lives? You should give up something that's taking a good toll, that's taking a bad toll and you say you can get, make it better. You'd have to go to church, you'd have to really like understand like the religion to really get into Lent. If everyone in the world gave up something for Lent, or if everyone was nicer to everyone, the world would be a much better place. If you stick to your Lent goal, and it would make you better as a person again, because you're going to struggle with it, and in the end, you're probably going to be better off as a person. You feel really good after you finish it, and then you understand how you really didn't need the thing that you gave up. Well, make it something that you can stick to, not something really like big that you know you can't stick to. You should really take it seriously, and it's not something that you just do so you can say you did it. Don't just go through the motions and say, oh, it's time for Lent, it's time for me to give up something. Actually, think about it. Think about the sacrifice that God made for us to save us from our sins and draw us close to Him. So, how has your perception changed of Lent, you know, since you were younger now? Oh, when I was younger, I thought Lent was so much longer than it actually is, because, like, <laughs> when you're five, 40 days seems like for an eternity, but now it kind of just seems like two weeks and you're like, oh, it's over already, like I gave yeah. up all that stuff. I know when I was younger, I thought of Lent of like such a sad moment. It was like a time of mourning and everybody was like sad and like I didn't understand it. Now that I'm older, it's really a point of growing in yourself and prayer and drawing yourself closer to God and waiting for his resurrection. I think that's the coolest part because we're really just preparing ourselves for our salvation. Mm -hmm. I think my sacrifices have changed as well. When I was younger, 
it would have been not playing with this doll or not touching this Barbie doll. Well, now I'm sacrificing things that I know that will help me and benefit me and not only help me physically, but help my spiritual life as well. Yeah, um, when I was younger, I used to think like if you didn't give up something that you were like, you know, maybe a bad person. But now I see that it, you don't necessarily have to just give up something. You can do something like maybe help someone out or volunteer somewhere and do extra work. And that can bring you closer to God as well as giving up things. I know when I was younger, I would do what Megan says little kids do. I would ask my mom if I could give up homework yeah. or <laughs> drinking water. And, like water. you know, now as I'm older, I realize as... Mary said, it's more about preparing for the coming of Jesus. Ever since I was little, I've always been like a complainer. But like <laughs> getting older, like I realized like the more like I understand the meaning of Lent, the more I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to whine about not having like candy or something. Facebook. We're just going to take this and like get our <laughs> Facebook. We're just going to offer it up. And like it's not really complaining. I'm supposed to take this and pr like to prayer and let myself grow instead of just looking at it like drudgery, you know? Mm -hmm. well, I think I make like dif more difficult like choices now. I give up harder things because when you're little, like giving up maybe a toy seems yeah. as hard as like like. Because <laughs> you're little. Do yeah, doing yeah. something that would be very difficult now. So like giving up Facebook would be a big thing like for me to do now. I think just spending more time with God because we're teenagers and we're so busy. And I know Holy Week, I'm in church all the time. You know, yes. <laughs> you know, just just adoration on Thursday, Good Friday, the processions and, you know, the stages of the cross. And I just, I love it. And just time with God that I don't get, you know, all during the year. Most Catholics may not know exactly why we make sacrifices during the Lenten season. One of the things Lent reminds us of is the 40 days that Jesus spent in the desert. And it was a time for prayer and preparation for his public ministry. During that time, Jesus fasted and was tempted by the devil, having to overcome his desires. It was a time to test his love for his father, his trust in his father, and the depth of his faith. Lent ends with the ultimate sacrifice that Jesus made for us on the cross. In reflecting on this sacrifice, our spotlight guest Megan experiences Lent in many ways. Let's hear her discuss them now. Uh, I try to spend more time in prayer and reflection, doing scripture readings and daily devotionals. Then also I Go, go to church on Ash Wednesday and Holy Thursday, Good Friday, of course, Easter Sunday. Try to observe the days of fasting and abstaining from meat. And then also going to morning prayer during Lent. One of my most memorable Lenten experiences is being a part of the washing of the feet during Holy Thursday Mass. At my home parish, the pastor first washes the feet of one of the parishioners and then that parishioner washes the feet of another parishioner and so on 12 times to represent the 12 apostles. You get to step not only into the feet of one of the apostles but then also through washing another's feet you get to stand in the place of Christ. Both positions are just incredibly uh, humbling and then this past year I was able to be a part of that again at college at our Holy Thursday Mass here. Both times, it's just an incredible experience. The different things that I've done for Lent helped me to listen to God more and to determine what He wants for me. I've also just come to appreciate Christ's sacrifice for us more and more. And through that, I've learned a lot about humility. So the 40 days that we have just a really great opportunity to develop these commitments that might last much longer than Lent. It can help us learn willpower and discipline. Although abstaining from something we really like and offering it up in prayer is a way to experience a bit of Jesus' sacrifice, it can be much more. It's a time to grow in our love of God and prepare ourselves for heaven. Next, we ask the teens on the street, how does doing something for Lent help bring you closer to God? And how do you feel prayer can help? It helps you get closer in your relationship because you realize just how much Jesus gave up for you. Like, it understands like what God went through giving up stuff, and so it can bring you closer. Like you're doing something for Him and not just for yourself. You know, like this is something He'd want you to do and He did so much for you, so might as well give something back. It makes you feel a little bit closer to God and knowing that you sacrificed something because you know he had to sacrifice something and it gives you a better understanding of what happened. Hopefully it's something that you can keep doing and it's a sacrifice for God and knowing that Jesus Christ gave the 
ultimate sacrifice is life. Prayer during Lent can help you give, like stay giving up the thing you gave up and make you stronger. If you're not praying, you're not going to be very close to God. It's important to pray because if you're really struggling, you gotta look for someone, someone for guidance, and God will always be there. Prayer is like a way of talking to God to help you, and so that's a way to like help you get closer and Him to like support you on the way. There's more of a meaning behind everything. It's important to pray all the time, not just during Lent, but Lent is a time for preparing and to prepare for Christ's coming, so it is important. I just learned to pray more and to be more spiritual in prayer, and like you can pray anytime. Like, just take a few minutes of quiet time and pray. What does your experience of Lent teach you about God? Um, for me, it, when I give up something, then when I think about having that thing that I gave up, it helps me to think about God and maybe say a little prayer. Like the person on the street was saying, you know, you don't, it doesn't have to be a big deal to pray. You know, just two, three minutes, just pray, do a silent prayer, and prayer is really important in your life, and you can get closer to God. I think maybe it shows you, like, by taking something out of your life, how much you can put God into that spot. So maybe yeah. that. I feel like it also, uh, you know, the suffering that we go through during Lent, it gives us, like, a tiny, tiny glimpse of what Jesus must have felt, you know, when he was tempted in the desert, but also when he was going through the crucifixion. I know for me that the awesomeness of knowing that all the people in this, in this religion share this event, share this sacrifice, or share this, mm -hmm. you know, this, this feeling, mm -hmm. it helps me on my personal faith journey. It allows me to become closer to God because I know that I'm not the only one who feels the same way. Right. The writer and speaker Matthew Kelly once said, Tell me your habits and I will tell you what your life looks like. The way we act, speak, eat and pray are all very much habits, things we do without much thought. He goes on to say that if we can change some of these habits, removing the negative ones and adding healthy ones, we will see our lives dramatically change for the better. So take some real time and think about this Lent and what you're going to do. What would really make a difference in your life? Is it some change that is deeper than a diet and more like changing your attitude? Are there overall prayer and family habits that need to become a part of your new lifestyle? Is there a virtue that you need to practice more often? One that you need to work on making more of a habit in your life? Finally, Megan speaks to us about why Lent is such an important part of our Catholic tradition and how it gives her courage to be vocal about her faith. Knowing that people all over the world, Catholics all over, are spending this time of reflection and prayer and fasting, almsgiving, has given me more of a sense of connection to the church community as a whole. Going to morning prayer each morning during Lent uh, I feel it really helped me to dedicate each day to God. Journaling is one of my favorite forms of prayer, so I try to do more of that during Lent. That has really helped me to think more thoroughly about many aspects of our faith. And another thing that I've tried to do during Lent is to consciously be more vocal about our faith and um, talk to others about God. That has really um, taught me to have the courage to do that. I would also suggest maybe making two types of goals. Maybe one commitment that is more personal, so focusing on your own prayer and reflection. Another goal that maybe focuses on helping others or being a part of the church community. And thinking about this whole, the whole concept of death and then resurrection can help us connect our lives to that more because throughout our lives there will be things that in a sense we die to, things that will fall away for us but then um, we come out of these things. God will always bring us through renewed, uh, reborn in a sense through that, through hard times. Thinking about that throughout Lent can really help us to remember that throughout life, God will renew us. So do you guys have any final thoughts? Um, I think Lent not only is a time of learning, but as older kids, you know, we have to teach the younger kids about Lent and about what you do in Lent. So helping our siblings, our cousins, the younger people in our church communities would be a really great way to start helping during the Lent season. I think it's uh, important, like Megan was talking about, you know, it's renewal, it's like rebirth. You have to, especially when you're helping, you know, kids and other people in your parish, 
like learn about Lent, you have to give them the positive side. And it's not always like sadness and mourning. You have to give them, well, you know, at the end there's the resurrection. And that's what we have to look mm -hmm. forward to. Now you shouldn't think about, oh, I had to give up this. I don't get to do that. But you should think, oh, like Easter Sunday's coming. I get to rejoice. I think Lent for me has become a constant reminder of what really is the essential core values of our faith. And that's God's love for us. He gave his only son and he went through a painful death and resurrection for us. And I think every time I have to sacrifice something or I have to give up something, it'll always remind me in the back of my mind how much he really loves us and how much he really cares for us. That's for true. <laughs> <laughs> in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, John the Baptist proclaims, This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the Gospel. We have a chance to look at Lent in a whole new way. We don't simply need to give up something for that which we will give up giving up once Lent is over. <laughs> Instead, we can give up or integrate something in our life that will profoundly change it and last well beyond the 40 days of Lent. So let's make an effort to focus on the deeper meaning of Lent and make changes that will last all the way into eternity. So what are you doing to get closer in your relationship with God this Lent? We'd love to know. Contact us through our website. The address is www.realfaithtv.com or you can call us at 609-406-7402. And we'll leave you today with this prayer from St. Ephraim, the Syrian. O Lord and Master of my life, take from me the spirit of sloth, faint-heartedness, lust of power, and idle talk. But give rather the spirit of chastity, humility, patience, and love to thy servant. O Lord and King, grant to me to see my own errors and not judge my brother. For thou art blessed unto ages of ages. Amen. Amen. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Real, Real Faith, Faith TV. TV. God bless.